What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Two Guys One Anime. My name is the Holy Apple, and we are carrying on today with Final Fantasy 16. So, just to sort of recap in the previous part, we were carrying on with the main story. Um, long story short, Mid did a runner, so now she's off somewhere else when we were trying to help her make um, pretty much this turn into a ship, which I suppose you could kind of see coming because notoriously, whenever Sid's involved, it means an airship's involved. But this time, it's a boat, so that's something different, I guess. But before I carry on with the main story, I am actually going to go check this letter out up here because it was just left there. And I'm not sure if this is going to start a side quest or not, so may as well figure it out now while we're here. There's actually quite a few, and these are going to be side quests by the looks of it, so. Quest for assistance. Uh, yeah, that's the one we read on the previous part, so that's fine. About Blackthorn. So, uh, cheers for helping to... Just be helped dragging Blackthorn out of the dumps the other day. Thing is, I reckon he's gone and throwing himself back in, judging by his drop of his jowls lately. Okay. So I'm thinking maybe it wasn't just the leather. What was on his mind? Maybe there's other demons jabbing their pitchforks into his... Why? Why are you doing this to me, August? But anyway. So, uh, yeah, Blackthorn's having some problems. So it looks like it's going to be a side quest episode. Yay. But I should speak to Blackthorn just in case. Yes, yeah, so we're going to go talk to Blackthorn in a bit. I don't know why I'm prioritising this. I've got two others to accept while I'm in. So, one of them is going to be talking to Blackthorn. Uh, something, a bad feeling. Something ain't right with that hound of yours. When it pleases your lordship, please come pay me to visit at the toll. Okay, why does Sharon want to know? What could be wrong with Torgo? You seen well enough when I last saw him. I mean, he technically is a Pokemon now. He can see the transform, so... Again, what? I don't know why I'm prioritising the quests. But, uh, yeah, and the third one off the record. The pen is mightier. Yeah, thank you for, um... Oh, that's probably going to be doing to reading letters, surely. Uh, I was thumbing through the highway ledges on Otto's behest. I might have come across something that might be worth attention. May... Okay. Sure. Let's go see what he wants. With the ledges. Shouldn't he be asking Otto for help? Okay, so someone's stealing from the hideaway. Brilliant. Just what I need. <laughs> So yeah, a bunch of side quests. Um, it's going to be worth checking the hunts as well, but I don't think there are going to be any new ones. So before I do any side quest stuff, I'm going to go check that first. Okay, Nectar, what have you got? Is it just me or is this name changing or am I just not paying enough attention? Anyway, hunts. No new ones. That's some good news, I suppose. But anyway, side quest stuff. Clive, did you get my letter? That's why I'm here. Shh. Otto won't be listening. <sighs> Is this better? A little. Listen. I have some bad news. It turns out the hideaway may be slightly behind in its payment to certain lenders. And it may be my fault. But I swear to the goddess, I thought I had the numbers square. Sadly, that square... Turned out to be more of a circle. Zero, you might say. I can straighten it out, I swear, but it's going to take some time. And I'm going to need help keeping it from Otto. Be late for that, I would say. There you are. What a surprise. So let me get this straight. You forget to pay our lenders what they're due. And instead of coming straight to me, you get Clive to come to you. And I hope he'll dig you out of the hole you've dug for yourself. Clive, the man in charge of the place you've been cheerfully trying to bankrupt. And you thought this was a cunning plan. Why? Well, who needs paying? Oh, just Martha. And the dame. And, well, Lady Karen. <laughs> But only 500 talents. We owe three of our most trusted friends five million gil. Each. Five million. Each. They lent us the bulk of the money we used to rebuild the hideaway, you see. And, well, uh, I must have made some sort of... oversight. <sighs> Those ledgers were my responsibility. And it was my decision to entrust them to you. This is my fault. Do we have that much to hand? I can always ask my uncle. No, we don't. And no, 
You won't. We've lightened Lord Rosfield's purse enough. After the King's ransom we had off him, he deserves better than to see our begging bowl. Besides, we'll need to learn to stand on our own if we're going to make this work. All right. But that doesn't mean you have to shoulder the burden yourself. Is there anything I can do to help? There might be. How'd you fancy taking these to Martha and the Dame? Rocks. Rocks, he says. Worth a thousand talents apiece, these are. A little something Sid and I set aside for when times got lean. And I reckon 15 million in overdue debt probably qualifies. I just hope our associates' eyes are a bit more discerning than yours. I'm sure they will be. Mm. Should be me making the rounds, really. But you know how it is with this place. Orders to bark, asses to wipe and all that. I know. Which is why I don't mind going in your place. Go. Do you know why I only gave Master Clive here two star rubies? Because... You'd rather Lady Karen killed me. Because I'd rather Lady Karen killed you. Yes. Well, I suppose this is goodbye then. Don't worry. I'm sure Karen will understand. Really? Do you think so? No. I don't. Yeah, Karen's gonna kick your ass. I'm sorry, there's no other way to say it, but, uh, yeah. So, that's, uh, interesting development. I'm not sure how you can miss 15 million worth of debt, but... Weirder things have happened in this game so far, so... Yeah, I'm gonna see all the other side quests while I'm here, though, before I run off and do it, because... It doesn't make a lot of sense to keep coming back when there's no need to. So, Karen, what do you want from me, anyway? You think something's wrong with Torgor? So you can read. Congratulations. But I didn't say I were wrong with him. I said some that weren't right. He's not been eating me treats. He used to love cracking the bones from Molly's boiled brown, but now he won't so much as look at him. Didn't like him. Which is why I'm of a mind that his mind's on somewhere else. You've not been working him too hard, have you? No harder than usual. Is that it, boy? Do you need a rest? What was it you said he was? A frost wolf? That's what the lawsman seems to think. Then maybe this all has something to do with whatever it is that's woken inside him. I suppose things have been different since Rosaleth. Perhaps Hippocrates knows something. Instead of everything, you mean? Perhaps. Poor little Torgal. I don't know what's wrong with him, but uh, I'm sure we'll fix it soon enough. Right, Blackthorn, whilst I'm here, what's wrong with you? Blackthorn, you have a moment. Not really, no. This won't take long. I just wanted to ask how you're getting on. August was worried about you, that you might still be doubting your craft, even after learning the trick of that cuirass. Is there something else weighing on your mind? Perhaps sharing your thoughts might help. That bastard's like a dog with a bone. Still, you've got a keen eye, I'll give him that. He's just, well, Karen showed me something. Something I've never seen before. And that was? A sword. An odd looking thing with a single edge blade. The metal itself wasn't anything to write home about, but fuck me. The edge on it. You could slice a man clean in two with a weapon like that, and he'd be halfway home before he even realized he'd been cut. So that's what's troubling you? Nah, no, no, no. Not troubling me exactly. More distracting. Can't stop thinking. How do you get an edge that sharp? It's driving me mad. And if you knew how to do it, we could arm the curse breakers with even better blades. That's about the size of it, yeah. I'll see what I can find out. Sharper swords are always welcome. And we can't have our master blacksmith being distracted. You're a soft touch, you know that. But I can't say I'm not grateful for it. Good luck, eh? Thank you.
Let's see what Karen knows about this sword. Yeah, that thing about me not going back, that's, that's already fell apart. I'm going back to Karen now. Great. You're looking well, Karen. What do you want? Out with it. I want to know about the sword you show Blackthorn. Single-edged and extremely sharp. Running around after him again, are you? I suppose I am, yes. But I need to help him find out how to work an edge like that. It's driving him to distraction. Little wonder, I suppose. There's not many like that make it as far as the twins, and those that do go straight into private collections. Which made it nice and easy finding a buyer. Can you tell me who bought it? Where is it now? You think I tell people who my clients are? Suppose you're not likely to go nicking him off me, are you now? Fine. If you stop mooning at me like that. Lord Ignac's the man you want. Delmechian bloke. Collects weapons and the like. And he's got more money than sense, which is why he's one of my favourite clients. Reckon he'll still be at the inn in Dallamil, where I left him. Thank you, Karen. Oh. And he's a touch eccentric. If you take my meaning. I appreciate the warning. No, not got a clue. But not the point. We're going to go see the um, Lawmaster next. It's a lot of talking in this first little bit. I just want to go out and kill stuff again. I feel like 90% of this game is literally just talking and lore, which isn't a bad thing because it's Final Fantasy, but still. Norseman, I need to ask you about Torgor. Something's not right with him. He isn't ill, is he? I don't think so. But according to Lady Karen, he seems to have lost his appetite, which is certainly a new development. She says he's hardly been touching his bones of late, and she believes it may have something to do with what happened at Rosalith Castle. Hmm. I rather think she might be right, though not about his appetite. All canids are instinctively inclined to crack open bones for the rich marrow that resides within, and I see no reason why a frost wolf should be any different. Accordingly, I suspect it is not a lack of appetite that afflicts Torgal, but a surfeit of it. If we assume that his newfound magics require additional nourishment to sustain, it may well be that the bones Lady Karen is accustomed to providing are no longer sufficient. Frost wolves, after all, habitually prey upon far larger animals, whose bones may yield altogether different nutrients. As to where one might find a suitable substitute, some antelopes that graze the meadows of eastern Rosaria have been known to grow to a size more than double that of their lesser cousins. I don't recall ever seeing any that large. And little wonder. The oldest and largest such creatures rarely leave the safety of the highlands for fear of predators. The last elder antelope sighting I recall hearing about took place near Cressida, and that was long before the village was abandoned. Even so, it seems like a good place to start. Good hunting, Clive. Now, that sounds like a bounty, if anything. So, uh, maybe not. <laughs> so, if there's more than one, it's not, it's not a bounty. But anyway, uh, first order of business. I can just jump from the map, making sure there's no other side quests. Because I don't think there is. I can't win. I have to go to the new area because every other map is locked. But it does look like there are even more... No, actually no, that's two of the same side quests, isn't it? So, we're going to see a bit of the main story and what's going off there first. All that for that little cutscene. Why? <laughs> How are you feeling? Better. Thanks to Taya. I'm glad to hear it. Well. And Torgal helped too. Didn't you, boy? I'm going to be honest. I might as well just like. No? Okay, let's stop talking. Cool. Can I now go back? I can now go to the map. Cool. So I'm not going to spoil anything for the main story. I can literally just carry on with the side quest. No idea why it wanted me to go there just to trigger that little cutscene, but game development, I don't know anything about it. 
Right. First one's actually quite close because it's just this um, in into. After that, we can go and see what's all the way out there. Which is in Dalamil. I probably could just walk there, actually, if it's Dalamil. Clive, we weren't expecting you. I wasn't expecting to be here. But it seems we still owe you a considerable amount of coin for your help with our rebuilding efforts. And though I doubt it's what you were expecting, we were hoping you'd take this as payment. A star, Ruby? I can't accept this. It's worth at least twice what you owe me. More if you can find yourself the right buyer. Think of the difference as interest. Interest? If word got out I charged that much, no one would ever borrow from me again. Anyway, why are you the one here asking me about this? I'd have expected Otto. Bit much sending the Lord Marquis out to sell your debts, isn't it? The old goat working himself to death again. Something like that. Most days I think he's the only reason the hideaway's still standing. Same as always, eh? Back when the place was nothing but a twinkle in the eye of a recently retired Lord Commander, word is he was the first one Sid reached out to. Probably knew that without his strong arm and level head, the idea would never get off the ground. Sid may have been the face of the hideaway, but Otto's always been the backbone. And when Sid passed away, we were all worried that would be the end of it. That Otto would just give up. His death was hard on everyone. But it must have hit Otto hardest of all. But he didn't give up, did he? Quite the opposite, in fact. If I recall, he was the one who nominated you as Sid's replacement. And rallied the rest around you. I reckon what he saw in Sid, he saw in you too. And don't we all... Doesn't hurt that you're half as stubborn and twice as handsome, neither. That, and you keep good company. <laughs> I suppose I do. So, she accepted the payment or not? Because I didn't get it back. <laughs> but anyway, off to Dalamil now, because that's where this other guy... Okay, I can't go straight there. Never mind, I'm going to do the long journey there. So, I'm going to cut it out, because there's no need to show it all. Yeah, I was completely wrong. <laughs> it's not It's not Dalamil. But, uh... Ah. Okay, there's quite a few. <laughs> Oops, set it to the sky. I don't think this is going to take long, to be honest. Doo -doo -doo -doo. To left, which Torgal is distracting by the looks of it. I had to make sure I moved it quick enough. Done. <laughs> I do need to learn how to do the Titan counter a bit more effectively. I'm not the best at it. Actually, I'm not even good at it. But I actually have 6,000 uh, skill points. I need to actually use them. Oh. Will it be enough, I wonder? Hopefully. I say that answers my question. Which means we owe the Lawsmen our thanks. You're just a big puppy, aren't you? A very big puppy. <laughs> you do know you can take that with you, Torgal. Lady Karen will be relieved to hear you've got your appetite back. Come on, boy. Yes, very big puppy, which is also a Pokemon. Right, so that's one thing done off the list. Now, on to the next thing, which 
I get to pick which ones actually. So Dalamil is the next one I want to do. It's just pretty much just a walking over and see what this um, guy's done with the sword. After that, it's just dropping off the other star ruby. So not a lot much else to do. I might even be able to go to like the main quest. Shouldn't be too hard to track down Kara's collector. Gone. The whole mother crystal. Yeah. Gone. You listen. I've got this theory. Okay. I don't think they all fell. Some of them. Just going to ignore you. Because you are crazy. One of them. I welcome. If you're hoping for a bed, I'm afraid you'll have to look elsewhere. No, I am looking for <laughs> Say nope, I'm gonna go upstairs and see this rich guy. Calm yourself, Lord Ignac, I beg of you, before you do yourself a mischief. Pardon the intrusion, but... Out! Get out! I paid for these rooms so I wouldn't be disturbed. Leave me be! Please, allow me to apologize. His lordship is going through a difficult time, and he's never been fond of guests arriving unannounced. Radim! Get rid of the filthy oaf this instant! Very good, Lord Ignac. Would you mind stepping outside for a moment? I'm sorry if I've caused you any trouble. That? No, no, no. That's just how his lordship is. Though the morning's events have left him somewhat fractious. He has been dispossessed of his luggage, you see. The thieves also made away with a considerable amount of coin. Coin the innkeeper will soon be keen to collect. I don't suppose a certain blade was among the stolen items. A single-edged sword. It was purchased from a merchant friend of mine. Ah, you know Lady Karen. Yes, I'm afraid it was. Then I'll retrieve Lord Ignac's luggage. But I have one condition. You are but to state it. You are welcome to anything that is within my power to grant. I want an audience with Lord Ignac. A few minutes should be enough. Then I'll be on my way. A condition I would be a fool to refuse. Of course, you shall have your audience. I don't suppose you saw where the thieves went? I did not. No. Though some discreet inquiries made on his lordship's behalf mean that I know where you might find them. The bandit's bed. Every ill-gotten coin in Dalamal is said to pass through that disreputable corner of the Valcroy. Then that's where I'm heading. I shall speak to Lord Ignac in your absence, and arrange for an audience upon your triumphant return. That will be very kind of you. Farewell, and best of luck. Thank you, but I don't think I'll need the lock. Um, God, that's a bit of distance, isn't it? Okay. Well, <laughs> I've got more trucker riding to do, so yeah, I'm going to cut to when I get there. Righty-o! Bandits, where are you? Get your ass kicked. Indeed you do. I am so rusty, it's unbelievable. I thought I actually got that, but never mind. One more swing, come on. Okay. <laughs> May deserve that. Just 
strange voice for a large enemy, but oh well. Enemy slain. Give me luggage. I'm going to have to look at the ability points quickly as well and see what I can upgrade. This must be Ignac's luggage. Nothing seems to be damaged. All right. Let's get it back to Delamil. I hear I have you to thank for the return of my effects. What shall I call you, my good man? Wyvern. Glad to make your acquaintance. A formidable name indeed. Well, Wyvern, I appear to be in your debt. Redeem here tells me you wished for an audience. Is that all? A few moments of your time should suffice, yes. You're a peculiar fellow, Wyvern. All right. Speak. A master wyvern was wondering if you could tell him about a certain single-edged sword you recently acquired. Oh, a true work of art, that one. Karen drove me hard on the price, but I would have sold her Radim here to get my hands on that sword. It was made in the Outer Isles, far beyond the Twins, and is used exclusively by the practitioners of a unique school of swordsmanship. They believe no combat should ever exceed a single strike and hone their blades to such perfection that none ever does. Each sword is made for that one perfect stroke, and for that stroke only. They crack upon a second blow. There's a brutal sort of beauty to it, really. But how do they hone such an edge? <laughs> Fine question. Why, they use a whetstone, of course. Whetstones, rather. A whole array of them, ranging from the coarse to the fine. Ten thousand licks with the sharpening stone, then ten thousand more. But it is the final stone which lends the blade its legendary sharpness. A mineral quite foreign to this great realm of ours. And that is the key. The secret ingredient. Wyvern, it occurs to me that my little lecture is hardly equal to services rendered. Take this, together with my regards. The very stone of which I spoke, far rarer among collectors than even the blade itself. And a far more fitting payment. Thank you. Pardon the intrusion, my lordship. However, it is long past time we prepared ourselves to depart. So it is. I am locked in bitter competition with a rival collector of curiosities. I am one step ahead of the unscrupulous scoundrel, but he is hard at my heels. And there are many other collectors out there. Too many to count, but only one do I consider my nemesis. Lord Byron Rosfield. And is a perennial thorn in my side. <laughs> I can imagine. Farewell, Wyvern. May our paths cross again. Radim, we mustn't dawdle. I think his lordship is rather taken with you, Master Wyvern. Thank you again for your assistance. Coming, my lordship. I'll be right there. Trust Uncle Byron to find such an interesting rival. Now, let's see what Blackthorn makes of this whetstone, shall we? Yes, we will eventually. But not right now, because we've got another thing to do. So, back to the map. We need to drop off one last thing. And why is the side quest... <laughs> Everywhere I go, there's a new side quest. I hate this. But um, I'll get to that bridge when I get to it, because it's, it's on the way to the main story, so I might as well get through the main story enough to get to the side quest, and then do the side quest. And then I can carry on properly with the main story. That's probably the best way to do this. Hopefully. 
Hello, Dame. You have Star Ruby. I don't know what you're going to do with it, but yeah, oh well. I come bearing gifts. Gifts? Whatever is the occasion. Oh, my. Clive, you really have outdone yourself. Otto asked me to give it to you. To settle the hideaway's debt with the veil. And to compensate you for the time it took us to do so. Oh, you disappoint me, Clive. I thought you might finally be warming to me. Tell Otto he can keep his baubles. I tried to tell him as much the first time around. The man owes me nothing, nor does the hideaway. My contribution to the restoration effort was made freely and willingly. It was the least I could do. You once told me Sid did you a kindness. I'd like to do the same. Please, accept it. For my sake. And for Otto's. For all of us. For all you've done. <sighs> it is rather fetching, isn't it? Very well. <laughs> Otto is lucky to have you, Clive. I doubt anything could ever replace his son. But you and the others at the hideaway are the closest thing he has to family. Otto had a son. Long ago, yes. Sid told me Otto lost him when he was just a boy and blamed himself for not being able to stop it. I don't know how it happened whether there was anything he could have done. But it was clear that it weighed heavily on him. I didn't know. How could you have? I doubt anyone did. Besides Sid, I've never met a man more keen to bear his sorrows in stoic silence. An ill habit, given that both have always been surrounded by friends desperate to help them. <laughs> I'm beginning to see that. We will want to know the stones were delivered. If he's still with us. Um, yeah, good point, actually. So, that is literally everything on the overworld at the moment. Apart from that one side quest that's all the way over here. So, I'm going to hand everything in now. And then we can carry on with going down the pathway and finding this other side quest, which apparently popped up out of nowhere. So, yeah, should be interesting. But we'll start by the guy who should have been killed, because that's probably the best way to start it. And he's also the closest, so... Goat. Still alive, I see. So Lady Karen accepted the ruby. Ah, oh, about that. Uh, I tried my best, but she was just too stubborn to take it. She threw it right back in my face, in fact, and told me I could stick my stupid stone where the sun don't shine. Karen refused payment. I hope it wasn't something I said. I'm sure you were as tactful as ever. Let me see what I can do. Oh, wonderful. I hope you have better luck than I did. A crying out loud, man. You had one job, and you couldn't even do that. But anyway, I've got to see Karen for two things now, so... There is that. I'm hopefully this isn't going to, like, override itself and have a freak out moment, but... I don't think it will. I'm hopefully the devs have thought that through. But just in... Well, Karen first, anyway. Don't freak out. Just do one quest at a time. And we'll be fine. Lady Karen. Go tells me you weren't happy with our offer. Would you prefer the debt was repaid in coin? What debt? I don't recall lending any of you lot me hard-earned gill. I may have tossed a talent or two in the Hardaway's coffers. But those were donations. And you can hardly call it charity if you go asking for it back. Of course not. But one good turn deserves another. And our circumstances have changed. Surely you wouldn't shun the gratitude of a pauper who happened to have become a prince. Oh, so you're a prince now, are you? Fine. But I'm selling it and taking what I'm owed, then you're getting the rest whether you like it or not. Where'd you even get this? 
A decent trader might nab a thousand talents for a star ruby. A canny one, meanwhile, might claim it were nicked from the belt of Sid the Outlaw himself and ask twice as much. Might be I already have a buyer in mind. Might be you even know her. The fine continental maid whose beauty is only eclipsed by a guile in commerce. You wouldn't mind, would you? Not at all. Just be sure to tell her that it's always a pleasure doing business. I hear you ended up delivering all three stones. Thanks to this lump. I sometimes wonder what I pay you for. Speaking of which, I, uh... I, I, I still haven't been paid last month's wages. Oh! So you remember what's owed to you, then? Get your ass beyond that disc of yours and don't get up before those ledges are square. Right away. I've seen that before. Yeah, yeah. Plenty of times. It was the only goblet Sid ever used. Either out of habit, or because the filthy soul couldn't be bothered to find a clean one. I knew so little about him. Like most people. Martha and the dame both seem to have fond memories of him. <laughs> I bet they do. How long did you know Sid before he... Before he died? Twenty summers, give or take. Back in the day, I was a purser on a trade ship, which is where I met him. He bought passage to, I oh, forget where, but having nothing better to do on the long nights, I set up drinking island rum till the morning bell dragged me back to my duties. Quit my post not long after that, on account of making a fine maiden's belly fat. But me and Sid stayed close, promising we'd one day sail the seas again. That was before fate stepped in and said she was having none of it. The magic woke inside my son soon after his first name day, and there was no hiding his neck. Couldn't you and your family have? My family were the ones who summoned the constable, wanted the monster taken away. I couldn't turn my back on him, forget what I felt. And I couldn't for the life of me understand how they could. Luckily, Sid was of the same mind as me. It was him who stood beside me when all I wanted was to tear the whole world down. Him who cried for me when I had no tears left of my own. Him who swore he'd do everything he could stop it from happening again and he was true to his word too left the royal army once and for all his ranks his ribbons gone just like that threw away everything he had all to right a wrong that no one else had the courage to face i knew then i'd follow that man to the ends of the earth too clever for his own good, was Sid. Saw the world for what it really was, while the rest of us were content to go along with the lie we were shown. And it can't have been easy, bearing that burden alone. But he didn't let it stop him. He never lost faith in what he believed was right. And that gave us faith in him. Faith he'd steer us true. So I swore on myself that I'd always be right behind him, ready to catch the stubborn sod if ever he should fall.
wouldn't even do that. Ignore me. Just the ramblings of a tired old man. Leave that lot. I'll tidy it up in a bit. This. This is Sid's handwriting. Dear Otto, I may be drunk, but I wanted you to know this place would be fucked without you. Love you, you old grumpy old sod. This note. Hmm? What about it? Sid was right. Without you, we all be lost. He should have bloody well said so then. Just once. Before he went. <laughs> but then, why would he? Him, or anyone? I'd only have told him to piss off. You're wrong, though. Both of you. It was never just me keeping the hideaway afloat. It was all of us. I just shoved people in the right direction. I barely seem to be able to do that anymore. Would you rather go where the helm? <laughs> well, maybe I've got a few more years left in me. <laughs> I'm going to hold you to that, Otto. Before you go, Sid would have wanted you to have this. But that's... This will do me just fine. Thanks for the ray of sunshine. I'll see if I can't pay you back. Already have. Oh, poor Otto. But yeah, so it'll have like a massive impact on everybody here since Goblet. So yeah, just played in Clark Chambers. I thought there would be a trophy. It <laughs> just gave me a ton of materials as well, including Meteorite, so. It's going to be helpful later on. Now, to Karen. Told me she was and then I'm going to be talking to Blackthorn after that. And hopefully I'll have enough time to actually go back and uh, do the other side quest. We'll wait and see. Okay, what do you have for me? I noticed you and Togo had gone off somewhere. Took him for a walk, did you? <laughs> you could say that. So, Molly's leftovers weren't good enough, eh? That'll teach me for treating you like you're still a pup. <coughs> all right, all right, no need to shout. Now I know what you're after, I can see about getting some in. Speaking of which, I brought one for later. Can I leave it with you? You can, eh? I'm nice like that. In return, you can thank Tomes for me. The bloody know-it-all. I was just on my way to see him. Ah, why are you making me walk everywhere? Right, Blackthorn, you're next. Sorry for the wait. 
but hopefully you'll agree it was worth it. You learned something about our sword then? I did better than that. I... Well, what's done? Yes. But not one you'll find anywhere in Valestia. finish on the grinding wheel. <laughs> One hit and all done, eh? Might not be so bad if all you ever fought were duels. <sighs> good luck on the battlefield. Your second opponent would be your last, no matter how good you were. Even so, is there some way it could be used to give the Curse Breakers an edge? I think so, yeah. With this whetstone and the right kind of steel, I could probably even make a twin of the blade that rattled me. But there'd be no replacing this little rock once I worn it down to a sliver. I reckon we get a dozen swords from it, if that. Swords that the Curse Breakers wouldn't know how to wield, probably, and that would see them through a single fire piece. Nah, no point trying to copy that thing. Be about as much use as a wax anvil. But finishing our blades with a whetstone is fine. Now that's something to consider. And what's finer than fallen masonry, eh? Or more hard wearing, for that matter. Just imagine it. Good Valisthean steel, with an edge as sharp as any found in the Outer Isles. I won't make a copy now. I'll make something much better. I'm sure the Curse Breakers will be delighted. Just... don't push yourself too hard. <laughs> don't you worry about me, Sunshine. I'll be working day and night since I was half your age. And I'll still be here when you're long gone. Hey. Thanks, Clive. I mean it. I owe you one, August 2. It's good to know someone's looking out for me. You'll be happy to hear you said that. And I'll see that my debt to you's paid. First new blade I make's got your name on it. You come and find me when you've got the materials. All right. I will. I'm not gonna lie, there's a good chance I've already got the materials because <laughs> I'm carrying a load around with me for no reason. Excalibur! That's a name I haven't seen in a while. So, let's see if I can make it straight off the bat because if I can then, amazing. Excalibur's recipe unlocked. Is it supposed to be like the best sword in the game or? Because it's never had that before. So, Blackthorn, let's see. But yeah, Excalibur was used um, quite a lot. I can't just make it straight away. Um, pff, big difference in damage as well. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Excalibur it is. <laughs> I'm going to make it straight off the bat. Brand new blade, more damage, more everything. So, Grindstone is not going to be used for a little while. I think I'm going to have to kill the next um, icon before I can use the next... Well, get the next one. I imagine that's going to be either... I don't think I'm going to kill Bahamut. But I, I'm under the impression that... It's quite a nice blade, actually. Yeah, but I'm under the impression I'm going to fight Odin and I'll probably have to kill Odin as well. That's so... Indian. I can't reinforce it at all, can I? Nope, just yeah. the green stuff. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, strongest weapon at the moment. I don't know if it's the strongest... I doubt it's the strongest in the game, unless the game is about to finish soon. Which is also possible, because I think level 50 might be the max level. If I get to level 51, that's not the case. I want to see if there's an ultimate weapon in this, though, because historically there is always some kind of ultimate weapon, so we'll wait and see. Ah, Clive. Were you able to locate your quarry? We were indeed, Lawsman. You pointed us in exactly the right direction. And Torgal's been a very happy hound ever since. Very good, very good. Lady Karen sends her thanks, by the way, for your part in solving the mystery. Ah, but that reminds me, after your last visit, I found myself pondering Torgal's talents. Do you recall our conversation concerning Lady Jill's role in Torgal's transformation? About how she somehow woke the power within him? Precisely that. A reasonable conclusion, I thought. But one which raised certain questions in my mind. You see, the Fenrir of legend served Shiva and Shiva alone. And while the powers attributed to him are certainly impressive, the records imply they are somewhat different in nature to those you describe Torgal as having used. What are you suggesting? 
that Torgal may be the beneficiary of more than one icon's power. Consider that in addition to Lady Jill, he has served as a loyal companion to you, your brother, and even the late Sid. In short, the icons hitherto near at hand, or should I say at poor, have been diverse and plenty, and that number has only grown as the realm's dominance have fallen to your sword. One can but speculate as to how all of this has affected Torgal. He has seemed more fierce of late. And if I am not mistaken, he will grow fiercer still. We are fortunate indeed to be able to count him amongst our allies and not our adversaries. <laughs> oh, he's more than an ally. He's a friend. So does this mean Torgal is going to evolve again? Because Pokemon sometimes have three evolutions. Well, three forms, shall we say. Kalos Fang slightly increases Torgal's attack potency. It's an accessory, so it's not going to get used, unfortunately. <laughs> not whilst I've got all the ones um, that are boosting XP gain and skill gain. So, unfortunately not going to happen. But, yeah, the only thing left to do is to go to Boklad, which is the next area to go. So, I will actually try and hunt down this side quest very quickly and see if we can get it done. Alright, first and foremost, where on earth is it? Not far at all, actually. So, this was actually a very good idea to do. I imagine it might actually just be something to do here. Wait, get to... get car. <laughs> okay. Oh, I've just realised where we are. That's interesting. Okay. So, it branches over an exi existing map... Because literally, we found we went up this way in a few, like two, three parts ago, and we had no idea how to get to certain areas. So that actually connects on, but we can't get there at the minute. So there's going to be loads of areas to go down and explore over here. So yeah, let's get to the side quest first before we get carried away. This used to be a trade route for merchants crossing the scars, till the Republic laid a new road wide enough to let wagons pass, and all official traffic moved there. Leaving this one. I'm sorry to like interrupt the comment. I've got past it. Indeed. I doubt we'll be the only outlaws on the trail today. If it's bandits, we'll mess them up. I won't worry about it. Although, I am very curious what kind of hunt's going to spawn down like that way. Because there was a big open area we got to last time. Oh, plant enemies. Show yourself. But yeah, there was like a, a big open area. I'm sure a hunt's going to spawn there at some point. Kind of hoping for a Hydra, if I'm being honest, though. And boom. Oh, yeah. Skill points. Completely forgot. So, I will do skill points now, actually. Probably going to be the best idea. Alright, first and foremost, Master in Limit Break, because I use it pretty much all the time, and it's going to be it'll make a lot of sense to actually do that. Flames of Rebirth, I will consider upgrading at some point, but not just yet. Because I've got all the stuff I can use, not to mention Earth and Fury... Which is, um, yeah, way more destructive than the triangle move I have at the moment. And also, it's quite a good attack. So, first off, Earth and Fury. And then, I can't, I can't upgrade Judgment Bolt. That's a shame. But I can upgrade Thunderstorm if I want to. I think I will, actually. So, yeah, the only one to do is Raging Fists. I now need a Grand to Jesus Christ. I'm just like, uh, these, like, 6,665... I'm just going to call that at pretty much 9,000. So yeah, I need over 9,000 ability points, which is kind of amusing, actually. But that's where I'm going to sell that for now. So, carry it on. Hang on. I thought I had 3,000 health. I was like, wait a minute. Since when did I get a massive spike in health? But, um, yeah. What do these uh, friendly chaps want? What do you think? A cell sword. Really? It's as bad as that. Oh, why? There's trouble up ahead. And too much of it for us to handle. I take it there's danger on the road. Oh, what about this fearsome looking fellow? You think he'd be equal to the task? Oh, no doubt. Assuming he's willing to hear us out. Well met, friend. My brother and I have been tasked with finding a merchant's missing cart. You seen it by any chance? How does a merchant misplace his cart? Oh, the man's a coward. 
When he thought goblins might come a snarling, he ran, leaving his livelihood abandoned in the pass. He sent the two of us to fetch it, but it's gone. Now, I'm not much of a thinker, but I know the work of thieves when I see it. My brother's right on all accounts. And by my estimation, the bastards are lying in wait just down the road. We may have seen our share of action, true, but we've not got the skill in arms to boldly brave an ambush. You, however, have the look of a man who needn't fear a band of backwater ruffians. What do you say? Will you help us out? Chances are they'll come for you either way. But if you promise to lend us a hand, at least you'll pocket a reward for your troubles. Well, if I'm going to have to deal with them anyway... You've clearly got a fine head on those broad shoulders. We're lucky you came along. Now, hoping to make a heavy purse in Boclad, our merchant friend loaded his cart with as much as it would carry. Reckon he won't be forking over the rest of our fee if we don't find those goods. So, while you're seeing to those bandits, you keep your eyes open. All right. Just don't expect me to drag the cart out of there myself. No, no. Uh, you can leave the cart to us. You just put an end to those bandits and point us in the right direction. You do that, we'll take care of the rest. I get the suspicious feeling these guys are bandits. But anyway, if I can earn a reward, then I don't care. But if there are bandits lying in wait, I should probably take it. Uh huh. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I'm kind of like the wrong person you want to fight. Taking you with me on a journey. And then there's you. I'm just gonna beat the hell out of her, to be honest. I haven't equipped the new ability, but oh well. Well, four limit break things as well, which is really cool. Doesn't matter how many enemies you throw, this guy is still going to die very fast. Excalibur's doing okay damage as well, which is quite cool. I wonder if I can actually... Like, I want to try and get to the damage cap as well, which I think is um, five nines. It normally is. That's them dealt with. But I think I'll only be able to do that with Ifrit. Where's that cart? Good question. Where is the cart? Oh, it's run down. Okay. I thought he was going to punch it. Never mind. Ah. Getting all of this out of here will be a nightmare. Seems we've found ourselves the right man for the job, wouldn't you say? Found the cart and didn't leave a single bastard breathing. Our merchant friend will be delighted. And how exactly will he be getting his goods out of here? You leave that to us. After all, it'd be wrong to make such a fine warrior haul cabbages to market. You've done your part, and that's all you need to worry about. Here. It's been a pleasure. Now piss off. There's no need to be so rude, brother. What if we want his help again next time? That'd be funny. There might not be a next time. Next time I'll probably be killing them, if I'm being honest. All that for 800 as well. Not really worth it. But then again, I don't want to like ruin this uh, amazing sword.
But that is pretty much the side quest done for now. I'll get to the next area and then we can leave the part off there. So onward to Boklad. Just because it's made of wood doesn't mean anything. Okay. So it's a strange area. Yeah, thought there might be enemies around here. Wakey, wakey. Apart. <laughs> and then the last one and crush him into the ground. <laughs> uh, that might have been a bit overkill, but it's so it's just funny we're using Titan's ability. Right, Bocklad. A land of the gods. It's even more impressive than I imagined. I remember being captivated by the story as a child. Long, long ago, man was overcome by avarice and challenged the gods in a bid to win their power. The final battle took place here at these falls. Or so the legend goes. If anyone ever manages to plumb those depths, perhaps we'll learn if there's any truth to the tale. That the gods emerged victorious and punished man for his defiance by visiting upon him two curses. Dominance in bearers. To tell the truth, I always thought it strange that the Dominant and their icons were deemed a curse. Back home, the Dominant inherited the throne. They were admired and exalted, not spurned. Whenever I got to that part of the story, I always assumed there must be something I'd misunderstood. You had a lot of storybooks, didn't you? In your room, I mean. When we were young. The old legends were always my favorites. Epic battles between gods and men. Father encouraged me to read as much as I could. He thought it good for my education. You really were a boy like any other, weren't you? <laughs> Just look at this place. It's enough to make you believe the legends are true. I know. We're not far from Boklad. The road will be busier up ahead. And we'll have to keep our wits about us. Something wrong? Nothing. It's nothing. See the reports are true, Father. You have surrendered the throne to Olivier. I have. Emperor Olivier shall rebuild the Holy Empire of Sambrek. How is he to rule an empire? He is but a boy. 
I shall advise him until he comes of age. Father, please. Or for as long as I am able. The empire we seek to build needs young blood to rule. And I can think of none better suited to the task. There is other news, Dion. Hugo Kupka is dead, and Drake's fang destroyed. The pillars of the Republic have fallen. Ere long, the Imperial banner shall fly over every city in storm. And then, Valisthea. All shall bow before their Emperor. Father, these are the words of a tyrant. They are the words of a god. The Emperor whom I gladly serve. Great Grieger made flesh. Turn to your camp, Dion, and ready your forces. It is time to show the world the true power of Sambrek. Father. <laughs> I find you much changed. Is this truly the path you wish to tread? Or are these the ambitions of another? Of Ultima, perhaps? What nonsense is this? I speak my mind, and my mind only. Though I do owe Annabella thanks for reminding me of certain truths. Regarding the nature of nations, of rulers, and of the divine. You will trust the words of this traitress. She betrayed her country. She slew her husband. You have ever been an invaluable servant to Sambrek, Prince Dion. I trust you will continue to serve your emperor in the wars to come. Silence! Insolent wretch! You will bend the knee. All else is heresy. Sire, forgive me. This audience is over. Come, your radiance. The Rowena Syndicate awaits your pleasure. No, not another meeting with silly old men. They're so boring. I'm hungry, Father. Can't we have luncheon instead? Does it pain you that you will not inherit your father's throne? I have suffered worse. <laughs> hmm. Count your blessings, Dion. For a base-born child to be chosen by Bahamut is miracle enough. You have risen high on his wings, but you shall rise no higher, lest your impure blood stain the throne. What do you know of my blood? Things are spicing up. Okie dokie. We just need to hug the coast. Uh, yeah, we'll be doing that later because the plot is going on for quite a long time, and we're like pretty good into the main story a little bit now. So, yeah, Bahamut getting antsy. We've done quite a few side quests. 
basically, I'll be picking up the main story where we're leaving it now on the next part because it's been going on for too long. I think we're literally on an hour now. So if you like the part, remember to give a like down below and also comment telling me what you think. And I shall see you all in the next episode.